Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. All right, let's get started. Uh, we have 8y equals 48. Okay, I want to divide by 8 on both sides and get y equals 6. Now let me uh, talk about this for just a second. The reason why 8y over 8 can become y is because the 8 divides the 8. And let me show you that we can be sure that happens. I can rewrite 8y over 8 as 8 over 8 times y over 1. If I multiply these straight across, 8y, right? 8 times y is 8y. 8 times 1 is 8. And 8 divided by 8 is 1. y divided by 1 is y. And 1 times y is y. Here we're going to use a very similar approach. We're going to get 4 divided by 4. Okay. Um, now I could multiply by negative 4 over 1. Okay. But first let me just kind of take a negative times a negative. And uh, we'll write it as 4 over 1 times x over 4, just so that we can clean this up. So we're going to see this kind of thing happen again. We have, let's say we take these two fractions and we multiply them together, we're going to get 4x over 4. We rewrite that as 4 over 4 times x over 1. If I multiply these together, I get that guy. This guy is equal to 4 over 1 times x over 4. d4 four over 4 is 1. x over 1 is x. There we have it. 1 times x is x. So all that worked out great. So all we have to do is multiply by the same thing on the other side. That's multiply by negative 4, negative 64. Here, we want to get the same thing. We want to get, we want to get a 1 times x, just like we had here, just like we had in the problem before. Uh, a lot of times in class, people will suggest divide by 6 sevenths. Correct, yes, very correct. But uh, I think it's just a little easier to be in the habit of multiplying by the reciprocal because I can, I can just kind of feel it, see it, taste it, that this is 42 over 42, and that is just very clearly a 1. Uh, and if I multiply by 7, 6 on this side, and I multiply by 7, 6 on this side, then uh, I think it's easier, definitely, to multiply this guy by 7, 6 than to try and divide it by 6, 7. Uh, you may disagree, but that's the way I like to do it. So here we have 1 times x, that's x. Uh, 126 times 7 over 6. Uh, do we have cross cancellation? Yes, we do. 126 divided by 6 is 21. So we have 21 times 7, 147. All right, here. Uh, some of you are tempted to divide by 10 here. I'm not sure. Uh, why, but uh, let's just say it would be much easier uh, to not divide by 10 right now. It would be easier to subtract 2. That's what I'm going to do. If you had x plus 2 equals 92, you'd subtract 2 from both sides to get x equals 90. Right? That's what you do. That's not our problem. No, where this is our problem. Subtract 2, subtract 2. 10x equals 90. And now the 10x equals 90. I can divide by 10. And x is 9. Now, if we did uh, divide by 10 to start with, it would just be a mess. Let me just show you real quick. Divide by 10. I think the, the reason why you divide by 10 is because you don't realize that you're doing it incorrectly. You don't realize all the stuff you'd have to do if you did divide by 10 at this step. You would have 10x divided by 10 is x plus 2 divided by 10 equals 92 divided by 10. I'm not going to simplify these because I know my next step is going to be subtracting 2 tenths from both sides, and I want to have a common denominator for sure, so I just leave it. Um, so x equals 92 tenths minus 2 tenths, that's 90 tenths, and x equals 9. And we did get the same answer, of course we did. We must get the same answer. We did our math correctly, it's just, it was more of a hassle. Here, subtract 2 divided by 10, done, x is 9. Number five, this is like a hybrid of uh, three and four that we just did. Uh, we will subtract first the 14 from both sides. Now we have 7 sixths y equals uh, 11. We'll multiply by 6 sevenths on both sides. Okay, 11 can't be divided by 7, no cross cancellation here. So y equals 66 over 7. All right, this guy here, I see uh, x's and numbers, and I'm just going to combine like terms as I see them here. Negative 5x plus 8x is 3x. 14 plus 7 is 21. 
And look at that, that's like number four all over again. We'll subtract 21 from both sides. And bring that up here, three x equals negative eight. And we'll divide by three on both sides. x equals negative eight over three. All right, I see parentheses, I see a thing there. I'm gonna distribute, it's just two tempting not to distribute. So I multiply negative 4 times negative 12, get no, positive 48 there, get 13. Um, now I have an 18n minus 12n, might as well put those together, get 6n uh, plus 48 equals 13. 6n, uh, oh, we're, uh, let's subtract 48 from both sides. Subtract 48 from both sides. 6n equals um, Let's see, 30, negative 35. We'll divide by 6 on both sides, and we'll just get this crazy fraction, negative 35 over 6. Uh, we have to write an equation here. Must write an equation. Uh, five basketball games. These are your scores for those last five. Uh, you want to average 8 per game. Uh, you want to have that average after the next game, the sixth game. Okay, let's let's think about it. If I were going to just find the average over these last five games, we would add these up, and we would divide by five, right? Now it tell us the average for the last five games. But we want to find an average of six games, so we know that we're going to divide by six for six games. And there's a sixth score that we don't know yet. That's why we call it x. We know that the average is going to come out to be, after we add them up and divide by 6, it's going to come out to be 8. Let's just go ahead and add these numbers together real quick. We've got uh, 20 plus another 10. That's 30 plus 5 is 35. Plus x over 6 equals 8. OK. What to do now? We can't subtract 35. To subtract a something from a fraction, we'd have to have a common denominator. And that just doesn't seem very good. And even if we did have a common denominator, what we would wind up with would still be a fraction. And it wouldn't really have helped us much. Uh, I guess some, but not a lot. What I'm going to suggest is that we multiply by 6 over 1. Multiply by 6 on the other side as well. So this is the same as 6 over 6 times 35 plus x over 1, right? Just kind of like, if I were to multiply these together, I'd have 6 times 35 plus x, 6 times 35 plus x, that's the same. And 1 times 6, 6 times 1, that's the same. So the 6 over 6 becomes a 1. So now it's just 1 times 35 plus x, and I don't really need to write divided by 1. So we have 35 plus x equals 48. 35 plus x equals 48. And we would subtract 35 from both sides. So x would need to be 13. You have to score 13 points in the next game to, to average 8 over those six games. Um, all right, well, we're buying a car. We got some money from mom and dad. We got some money from work. We got some money from uh, mowing lawns. We've got some money coming up from work. And we want to know how many hours we would need to work. OK, let's call it. It sounds like a lot of money has to add up to $1,700. A lot of money from a lot of different places has to add up to $1,700. Uh, 600 of it coming from mom and dad. Let's add on to that the $77 left over from lawns over the summer. Let's add on to that money we've made from work. That's going to be, well, we'd have to add up all of our hours, right? 27 plus 20 plus 21. And then we'd have to multiply that by $11 an hour. Okay, so add all that up. That's, that's like the money I have so far. I've got to add on some more money, right? I've got to get up to $1,700. Where that, where's that money coming from? It's coming from work. Uh, once I have worked however many hours, I would just multiply those number of hours by 11, right? And when I add that amount on, it should take me up to $1,700. So $11 an hour times the remaining hours at work, that should give us what we're looking for. So 11x plus, let's add these together, that's uh, 68, 68 times 11, that's, uh, let's see, 748, plus 677, 
eleven x. Let's add seven forty eight and uh, six seventy seven. Let's just uh, performing in front of a live audience makes me nervous. Fourteen twenty five equals seventeen hundred. Now we have, uh, it's a lot like number four. We have a, a number times x plus a number equals a number. We would subtract 1425 from both sides. To get 11x equals, uh, let's see, that's a 75. That's uh, two, right, 275. And we divide by 11 on both sides. And I knew 275 divided by 11 is 25. So x equals 25. 25 hours I'll have to work this month, which is more than I've known. 27 I worked before. So it's not like a record setting month, but uh, I will have to work 25 hours. 25 hours in a month for a student, that's kind of a lot. Uh, but it can be done. Oh, here we go. Variables on both sides. I don't like variables on both sides. I like variables on one side. So I need to not have variables on one of the sides. How do I, let's say, let's pick this side. How would I get not variables on this side. How do I get not variables on this side? Well, I need to, there's the variables, I need to somehow uh, counteract it or cancel it out. Uh, well, 5x minus 5x would be no x, right? That, that should work, so we'll subtract 5x from the other side. So you have 3x plus 4 equals 25. We'll subtract 4 from both sides, giving us 9. No, no that's silly. Giving us 21. We divide by 3 on both sides, x equals 7. Divide by 3 on both sides, and x equals 7. Look at that. Distributing is just sitting there. I really like distributing, so I just distribute like a madman. Uh, now, what are we solving for? Solving for x. I want to get x. Okay. Uh, so I don't want a, and I don't want 6. They are being added to 2x, so I would subtract them. a minus a is nothing. I'll subtract a from this side. 6 minus 6 is nothing. Now nothing is added to 2x on this side. And we have 2x equals f minus a minus 6. Okay. No matter what this junk over here looked like, if you had 2 times x equals anything, equals 14, equals 21, equals 17, equals 48, you would divide by 2 on both sides. And this is going to mess me up. F minus a minus 6. Whenever I hit undo, it just like gets rid of a lot of the tiny marks that I've made. Okay, so far we're okay. I better mess up a bunch of stuff up here too. Three uh, x plus four equals twenty-five. Okay. Anyway, divide by two. That's what we would do if we had a two x on one side, and x would be equal to this crazy, crazy thing. F minus a minus six divided by two. Uh, solve this equation for q. Okay. Ah, uh, well this is a whole lot like uh, number four as well. We have a 10 times the variable we're trying to isolate plus something here, some number equals something over here, right? It's a simple two-step operation. We would subtract the thing that's being added so that if there's a zero there, 10q plus zero equals well, 49 minus 15n, they're not like terms, so I cannot subtract 15n from 49. I can only write 49 minus 15n like that. And then we would divide by 10, divide by 10. And q equals 49 minus 15n, all divided by 10. OK, well, I can't resist a, a good opportunity to distribute, but now I'm seeing there's this uh, 5x minus 2x. I'm just going to write that as 3x. I like to do things at, all at once sometimes. So I have 9 here. Distribute the negative 2. We get negative 8x. 9 minus 8x minus 4. OK. Hmm, I have variables on both sides. I want to not have variables on one of the sides. I'm going to choose to not have variables on this side by adding 8x. I chose to do it that way because I know that when I add 8x to 3x, I'm going to get a positive number of x's. So we get 11x plus 14. 9 minus 4 on the right side is all that's left. That's 5. 9 minus 4 is 5. I'm going to subtract 14 from both sides. 11x uh, is going to be equal to negative 9. Okay. 
And then I'm going to divide by 11 on both sides. I know what that's going to look like. It's going to look like negative 9 divided by 11. All right. Here we have a video store that costs $50 to join. That's a big chunk of change. But 99 cents for each video. And this guy charges $3 a video. Um, and then it asks, how many videos uh, must you rent to make the first club a better deal? So right now, it's not a better deal. It's way expensive. But after a certain number of videos, it'll be less expensive. And after a, an exact number of videos, they'll be exactly the same. So right after it's the same, they'll switch. Like, this is more expensive now, and this is less expensive. At some point, when you run enough videos, you're going to be paying a lot more per video, right? And this is going to just be creeping up. It's just you're going to add on 99 cents per video, so it's going to be growing really slowly. But at some point, you're going to pay the exact same amount whether you joined this club or if you joined this club. And then after that, this is going to be more expensive because you're going to continue to pay $3 every time you pay a video, but only $0.99 cents every time you pay for a video here. So uh, this guy right here, this is going to be like $3 per video. That's $6 for two. That's $9 for three. That's $12 for four. Right? We're just multiplying three by the number of videos. right? Uh, this guy here, this is going to be uh, the same kind of an idea, but it's only $0.99 cents times each video. Uh, and then we have to add on that $50 that we spent at the beginning to join. And once those are equal, then we know that it's going to start switching over and that this guy's going to be less expensive over the long run. So here we have an equation that we solve for x. We subtract 99.99x here, minus 0.99x. And we have 50 equals... Uh, 2.01x, and we divide by 2.01, 2.01, all right, 50 divided by 2.01, um, yeah, that didn't work, let's go back over here, and insert the divide, there we go, 24 point, let's call it 88. Okay, so 24.88, that's what x is, but what does that represent? Well, let's go back. That represents this situation where this club uh, costs the same as this club. Okay, so if you were to rent somehow 24.88 videos exactly, which of course you can't do, they won't let you cut videos uh, into a 0.88 of a video so that you can rent just that much. That's a silly idea. So. Let's think about when we rent, when we have rented 24, when we have rented 24 videos, this is still more expensive by a little bit. When we rent 24.88, they're exactly the same, but once we rent 25, the first one will be a better deal, right? You'll have spent less. Uh, and we can verify that. We can do uh, 25 times 0.99 and add the $50. 7475, three times 25 would be 75. So this is uh, 25 cents cheaper. Okay, so it would, you have to go all the way up to running 25 videos uh, in order for the first club to be a better deal. Here we're solving this for B. We had this was like number three, where we had a fraction. And what did we do? We multiplied by the reciprocal. No difference here, because the only thing that I care about is getting b by itself. I don't care what happens over here. Over here, what do I have to do? I have to multiply y by 8 fifths. You know, whatever happens, that's what needs to happen for b to be isolated. So b is equal to 8 fifths times y. And that's it. Uh, that's the last one. I thank you for watching, and if you need any help, just let me know. Have a good day.